I taped the batteries up real good so there's no possibilities of shorts. And then I took the foam rubber off these brushes and used that to keep the batteries from moving around in the cabinet. Okay, I'm going to test a couple of transistors. Turn the power on. This power and regular switch is actually a divide by 10 and multiply by 10 switch. And you wouldn't get that from the label. But that's what it says in the instructions. So the first thing to do, set that on regular. And this is a in this is a PNP, so I just switched it to PNP. This is the C connection, and then the next thing we do is hook up the E and check for leakage. Okay. No leakage. Okay. Yep. Here's the B. Plenty of gain. So switch that. Now we can do a reading on it. And it's almost 300 beta. Okay. Okay, so that was the PNP. Now we'll do the NPN. Lead configuration is the same. Okay. Lead test. That's good. I'll hook up the base. Scale again and the beta of the NPN is a little over 200. Well, both the transistors are good. Okay, I've got this set up and this is the listening part of it. The de well, detector RF amplifier, audio amplifier. And I've got this up all the way. And here's the generator part. And they recommend using a .01 uh, capacitor, which I have right here. And I'm going to inject a signal this radio is playing right at the very beginning of the radio. And you can hear that signal that we saw on the scope. But you can also use this to trace it through the circuit. There's lots of places. Here's a generic drawing of a typical AM transistor radio. And in that video, I had injected a signal right at the very beginning of the radio, right at the antenna. And we were listening through the speaker of the radio itself, and then a little later with the signal tracer. And there's many places where you can inject the signal. I could have moved 
into the first transistor base and injected it there and at its collector and you can see here there's lots of places where you can inject the signal it's also the same places where you'd want to listen and what I did in the video was I also used the tracer to listen at a few different points in the radio and of course you have to study the diagram of your radio and get familiar with those points before you start injecting and listening to these various parts of the radio. But the signal injecting and listening is a very effective tool for troubleshooting. Back to our original setup here. We could definitely hear the signal going through the entire radio. And this radio does play stations. But let's say that it didn't. And what would that mean? That would mean that all the IFs are good and I probably have a problem with the oscillator of the radio. Here's a, another scenario. Let's say I've been injecting signals starting at the antenna and I worked my way to this point and I'm listening at the collector of the third transistor and I'm still not hearing anything but I move the injection to right here at the base of the transistor and I do hear the signal now. Well that means that of course that transistor is good but what that could mean is the IF transformer in front of this injection point is bad or the capacitor is bad or possibly both but that would narrow down the parts that I need to look at. Here's another possibility. Say I'm injecting the signal with the collector of the first transistor and I'm listening at the base of the second transistor and I'm hearing my signal just fine but I move the tracer to the collector of the second transistor and I don't hear anything. Well, that could mean that the transistor is bad, the second one, if it has power. If it has power, that transistor is bad. If it doesn't have power, that means that the second IF primary may be open. I never knew that they made a piece of equipment like this, but it's a very nice piece of test equipment and a really good idea. Thanks for watching.